and I'd just like to present a little bit on some of the new features in LaserFiche Forms 10. Uh, the majority of the things that I'll be covering in this webinar are field calculations, uh, some of the process modeler updates, the new Teams feature, uh, primarily team creation and administration of those teams, uh, the new operational dashboards, <coughs> and some of the new expanded workflow functionality. One of my favorite new features in Forms 10 are the field calculations. In previous versions of LaserFeature Forms, you were actually required to write JavaScript code to get this functionality, but now this feature is actually built into Forms 10. And if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel formulas, like you'd use in an Excel sheet, then you're ready to go. You'll notice that the example shown in the field description in this screenshot is actually of an equal sum uh, formula, but there's a ton of other formulas in here, and all you need to do is click on Learn More there to see what some of those other formulas are. This is actually a screenshot from the Forms Help file detailing just a, a small sample of all the, all the different formulas that are available to calculate field values. Uh, as you can see, these, these are all very powerful calculation methods, so these, these, will, uh, these will allow for a lot more dynamic information populating your forms. Some of the process modeler changes in versions 10 are really, really powerful. The addition of signal events now allow communication between separate branches of a, of a form's process. And what this means is activity in one branch can actually cause change to routing in another branch. There's also terminate end events, which are a little more powerful than the original end event that we've seen in previous versions. Uh, this terminate end event actually terminates the entire form's process when it reaches there. So you can actually end a full form in one branch of a form. And we'll cover this in a lot more detail later on in the webinar. If you are familiar with the service task from previous version of LaserFish Forms, then you'll notice that each of its various configurations have been separated into their own activities in Forms 10. This is really useful because now that each service task has its own unique icon, a forms administrator should be able to easily identify exactly what's happening in a forms process without having to view the properties of every single service task. Now let's talk a little bit more about those signal events that I mentioned earlier. Signal events actually come in two forms. There's a signal that broadcasts and a listener. Take a look at the two screenshots pictured here. The signal intermediate event at the top with the solid triangle is its own task in the process modeler, and branches of a process can actually be routed to this task. And when the process reaches this point, it actually broadcasts a signal. You'll notice the bottom screenshot shows a similar icon with an empty triangle. This is attached directly to a user task called supervisor approval. The icon represents a listener, and if that user task is currently active, then that listener is waiting for a signal broadcast. In the configuration for the broadcasting signal, you'll notice that its broadcast signal setting is set to cancel director task. A signal intermediate event can actually only broadcast one signal at a time, and it's only ever configurable for one single signal. So if you have multiple signals that might need to be sent, you'll need multiple signal events. In the configuration for the listener event, you'll notice that its listen to signal setting is also set to cancel director task. Here we've chosen to interrupt the attached activity, and we'll be going over how this could be used in practice a little later in the webinar. The terminate end event can be placed in the process modeler as a task, just like the original end uh, that you've seen in previous versions. You'll notice its properties are really similar. It doesn't allow for any drastic customization. The best you can do is rename that terminate end event. Uh, and again, we'll cover exactly how this could be used in a couple of slides. Another large change to the process modeler is in regards to the user task properties. It's now possible to auto-load the next form in a forms process if the current user will be assigned. So if somebody is 
filling out a form and they submit it and it's actually their task to fill in the next form instead of having to jump back and forth between their uh, <clears throat> inbox refreshing and loading forms and refreshing it'll just load that form immediately for them you'll also notice that due dates have been added and you can base these on a variable in the form uh, they can be a static date uh, and they're really useful especially for metrics and uh, making sure that things get done on time priority has always been a setting in forms user tasks and you may have seen it it's it was originally its own tab uh, but now it's part of the general tab and it's actually configurable based on conditions so now a process creator could identify a, a priority level based on field values in the form so maybe a dollar amount would put this at a higher priority or you could even use uh, an end date or an expiration date to define priority as well so now let's see how this all fits together because these are a lot of new tasks and it's it seems pretty complicated at first um, this is a process model that utilizes all of these new activities and the first thing that happens is somebody submits the form then it routes to the director uh, or to the immediate supervisor for approval but you'll also notice that it's routing to the director as well following the path of that parallel gateway so should that director choose to override that supervisor and make that decision themselves it could route one of two ways first if the director chooses to reject the form then the process will proceed down the reject branch to that terminate end event this will cause the entire process to end including that supervisor approval task that is still assigned if the director chooses to approve the form will route down the approval branch broadcast a signal and end that branch the same processes could happen within the supervisor approval branch as well should that supervisor choose to reject it will head down that branch to that terminate end event and the same process will happen the entire form will terminate if they choose to approve it will continue on to the signal and then save to laserfish the signal events in this process only communicate with their corresponding listeners so for example the cancel director task signal event will interrupt the corresponding activity which is in this case the director approval task once it's interrupted and that signal uh, gets transmitted it routes to an endpoint so that branch will end the director's task is no longer assigned the same is true for the director override this one corresponds to the signal event on the supervisor approval Did that supervisor approval get interrupted and take this route it goes directly to laserfish and to a end event pictured off screen the introduction of teams in forms 10 really takes this product to a whole new level team assignment allows a process creator to assign user tasks to an entire group of people teams are configured directly in forms so you can include participants as well as laserfish named users and they do not correspond with laserfish groups or active directory groups within teams roles can be defined as well this added layer of organization adds for a uh, dynamic task assignment and forms and we'll cover that in a, a lot more detail creating a team is actually a very easy process just start by giving the team a name and description and configuring task visibility within the team the task visibility setting will determine whether team members can view a full list of assigned tasks or just the tasks that are assigned to them we've named this team sales and in our task visibility we've set it to hide team tasks from team members who aren't assigned that task next we need to set up our users the team administrator will automatically be assigned to the user creating that team in this case it's our administrator user team administrators have the power to edit the team settings add users and roles and delete teams team managers have the ability to assign and reassign tasks within their team 
the managers also can add users and roles to their team as well. And team members are all the users that perform work inside that team. So please note that team managers can also be team members. Here you can see that we've defined our city's digital sales department users. Patrick is an administrator, manager, and member. Morgan is a manager and member. And Sean and Aaron are both team members. The last setting in team creation are roles. These do not need to be defined, but they can help drastically with task assignment and forms, so we're going to set those up. Let's start by creating our Midwest role. Our description will provide a little bit more detail. This role is for Midwest account managers, and we'll assign Sean to this role. This is what your roles tab will look like when it's fully configured. A team manager or administrator can actually view this dashboard that's pictured here, and they can edit user settings, add roles, or add users to this team. Some of you Pacific Northwest clients may be wondering why Ryan wasn't in the sales team. Don't worry, we'll be adding him now. We'll start by setting our user setting to Ryan's user. Then we'll define him as a team member and assign him to the Pacific Northwest role. It really is that easy. Simply click the Add button and make Ryan a member of the sales team. So now you can assign user tasks, as you would previously to any specific user in the process modeler, to a team. First, you just select the team that you want to assign that task to. In this case, I've selected our consulting team. And then configure any filters that you'd like to apply. In this case, I've applied the PM filter for project managers. These filters will actually only be applicable if you're assigning tasks based on role. So if you'd like this task to actually ignore roles and assign to the whole team, you can just leave this filter unassigned. The filters themselves are configured using JavaScript, but if you aren't familiar with JavaScript, there's not really any need to worry here. The configuration for this activity provides you some sample code and some examples of how to apply it. Lastly, you'll need to set your task distribution. You can choose to assign this task to every user in the team or role selected or distribute based on a round robin. Along with the team administration dashboard, a team manager is able to view all of their team's tasks right from their own forms inbox. By selecting the team on the left-hand side, the manager can view all of the team's assigned tasks and filter them based on a number of different variables, for example, who the task may be assigned to. The dashboard is also where a team manager can reassign tasks and alter task due dates. The manager can do this by clicking the menu icon available on each task row pictured with the three dots right there on the right-hand side. The manager can choose to assign the task to another user or even another team, should that manager also manage that other team. Now let's take a look at the much-talked-about operational dashboard. This is an administrator-oriented dashboard and provides a lot of process details. Here you'll see some consolidated statistics about this forms process, and at a glance, an administrator can see that there are 65 instances of the form currently running, 13 of which are suspended. You can also view the user task statuses, and if you notice that ring around 52 total, that kind of represents a pie chart. Uh, this approval task doesn't actually have a due date assigned, but if it did, the pie chart would show a distribution of on-time tasks versus due within 24-hour tasks versus overdue tasks. If the administrator clicks on the Instances with Suspended Tasks link, they'll see a detailed list of all suspended instances of the form, along with some information like when they were started and who started them. And one major change to forms administration is the ability to actually view error logs directly inside the browser. 
Administrators no longer need to actually log into the form system and comb through event logs to find the corresponding uh, error log. They can actually view that right here in the browser. And the new dashboards aren't just improvements for administrators and managers. End users can actually sort their history by column and whether they were started by me or involving me. Another big change here is that they're able to see the status of their own submissions. So an end user will know immediately if there was, a, if there was something wrong with their form because they can see right here that it was terminated. There have also been some improvements to the interaction between forms and LaserFiche workflow. Note that these improvements require both Forms 10 and Workflow 10, and bear in mind the following items are actually all going to be workflow activities and not directly part of Forms, but they do interact heavily with LaserFiche Forms. One major addition is the ability to start a Forms process directly from a workflow. When starting a forms process, you must first select which form you'd like to invoke and which fields you'd like to set the values for. This form can be started by the workflow system account, or you can actually specify a laser feature user starting this. Here you'll see we've selected a time off request form and several variables that we might want to assign. Now that we have our form and variables selected, we can choose to define them. This is really easy. Uh, all you need to do is select a variable token from our little uh, token menu, which is the arrow on the right-hand side of that field there, and typing a value after the equal sign. These variables are all separated by a line break. You can see that we're setting employee name to Eric Anderson, a couple of dates for a PTO request, the total days out of office, and defining the hour type as PTO. You can also return variables to a forms process with the set business process variables activity and workflow. When you use forms to invoke a workflow using that invoke workflow activity in that process modeler, uh, you can actually choose to pause the forms process and wait until that workflow is finished running before resuming the forms process. Using the set variables activity, you can return values from the forms process during this time. Workflow is a, is a much more powerful tool set than the forms process modeler has and could be used for a number of really uh, advanced tasks that forms may not be able to handle on its own or might not have the scope to do on its own. Uh, for example, if you need to do some really advanced calculations or maybe some really advanced database lookups uh, or even searches in the LaserFish repository, you could do all of that in Workflow and report values back to the forms process before it moves on. Uh, the configuration for this task is almost exactly the same as the invoked form activity we covered in the previous slide. And that covers all of the major changes in LaserFish Forms 10. Uh, thank you for joining us for this webinar.